G'day, I'm Alistair Christie, and welcome to this presentation on how to share your knowledge. So here we have the obligatory about me slide. Um, here are some uh, salient points. I'm an Embarcadero MVP. I maintain the LearnDelphi.tv website, which I've done since 2006 or so, and uh, I have a YouTube channel, and there are about 220 videos or so on that channel now. Um, I've been using Delphi since about version 3, and I'm the author of two Delphi books. The first, Code Faster in Delphi, is about being more productive in the Delphi IDE, and the second, only just released, Code Better in Delphi, is on writing better code in Delphi. Both are available on my website, the aforementioned learndelphi.tv. As you can see, there are lots of different ways you can share your Delphi knowledge. We'll go through a bunch of these superficially, and we will look at making YouTube videos and writing a book in a lot more detail, uh, because I have a bit more um, knowledge about doing those. There are lots of different forms of social media. The ones I am mostly into are LinkedIn and Facebook, but I occasionally dip my toes into Twitter. Both LinkedIn and Facebook have many Delphi communities, which you should join, where you can post some of your knowledge or some interesting links or facts. I don't really have much to say about Twitter and Instagram. I sometimes have a look at my Twitter feed, and I have some followers, and I follow a few Delphi luminaries. I do post occasionally, but not very frequently. Both Discord and Slack have communities, but this is not something I have explored. So here is my Facebook page. Uh, and uh, most, I mostly use it uh, friends and family, uh, people I've actually met. Uh, but I will go into various Delphi groups and we can see if I click on groups, I have a variety of groups and we can go into I don't know, Delphi tips and see uh, various um, posts by people and they might have uh, questions which you can answer or you can just post useful information uh, links to pages and things like that I find most social networking sites are quite ephemeral in that once you've made a post it tends to disappear and never be seen again after a few days and for instance Google does not index um, Facebook they are basically direct competitors for your eyeballs so um, really it, I personally wouldn't spend a lot of time uh, creating a detailed Facebook post but I would post a link to a video I've spent a long time working on or perhaps a blog post or something similar or just post some interesting link that's Delphi related so, um, yeah, it's a great way to, to quickly answer a question for someone or quickly ask a question, but um, that information is somewhat lost forever. Uh, LinkedIn, um, where LinkedIn is, oh, sorry, where Facebook is more friends and family. Um, LinkedIn is far more business oriented. And, uh, well, for, personally for myself, um, a lot of people use Facebook for quite serious marketing efforts. Um, I'm not one, not, one, not one of those. Lots of stuff on LinkedIn. And again, there are various groups. And we can see um, here's some various Delphi posts. And there'll be uh, probably quite a few that come up uh, in, in my feed. And also we can go to a Delphi-related group and get specifically Delphi information and likewise we can post information into here. I find LinkedIn, LinkedIn is less ephemeral than Facebook and also uh, if you're sort of an, an active member people will message you with job offers and things like that. So uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting. I get uh, a few um, I, say, I wouldn't say job offers but re recruiters trying to they want to fill positions because they get a huge commission on uh, finding people for filling roles. So there's lots of groups here, sort of 
is my profile in a bit more detail. Um, I'm not I haven't. I, I probably need to spend a bit more effort tidying up my profile and, and making it a bit more prof professional. But um, yep, you can connect to me on LinkedIn. I'm Alistair Christie on LinkedIn. Yeah, I find LinkedIn is a bit more formal and business orientated, where Facebook is more social and uh, yeah friendly. But uh, that just might be uh, the, the various pages I've been on. So anyway, let's go back to the slides. So you want to start your own blog? Well, there are plenty of options. Most listed here have free tier or freemium hosted options. Others such as WordPress you can have hosted or install into your own hosting. Once you have a blog, you can then join one of the feed aggregators. The two that I'm aware of are Delphi Feeds and Begin End. So here are some of the options, uh, Wix and Squarespace. Um, Squarespace is often a sponsor of various YouTube videos, so um, they <laughs> uh, not, one of, not, not a sponsor of mine, but anyway. Um, WordPress is very common, and they say they power 43% of the web, which is probably true. WordPress is, is very powerful and you can uh, it's free open source you can download and install it or uh, have it hosted somewhere in fact um, they, they will uh, wordpress.com will host it for you I think wordpress.com is the um, commercial side and wordpress.org is the uh, sort of community and development aspect of it so the, the open source stuff now, as far as the feed aggregators go, there's uh, Delphi Feeds and uh, Begin End. Begin End seems to be a bit more uh, up to date. Uh, and you can uh, have a look at the feeds. And Alistair, no, let's try. Learn Delphi.tv, there I am. And it says that I'm active. And once you have a feed uh, or a blog you can suggest a feed and it will um, potentially pull out your posts and put them into the uh, the list uh, at which point uh, people can then vote on which which topics they like so that's available on both Delphi feeds and begin end and these are great places to uh, find out what's happening in the, the Delphi world because they do aggregate um, so many blogs together in one place. So this is my website, learndelphi.tv, and we can see uh, that I have basically just a list of the videos I've made. Uh, that's pretty much my only uh, content, um, apart from the premium content section, which I have uh, various things available for sale, uh, including my two books. Uh, in fact, the print version is available now. I should put that as a... Uh, a link in there uh, and you can of course get it uh, from here from either Leanpub or Amazon uh, we'll be looking at those in a little bit more detail uh, shortly so this website is hosted with GoDaddy I don't necessarily think I'd recommend GoDaddy as a hosting platform um, they're a bit uh, the, the prices they, they start out low but then they creep up over over time so you end up paying quite a lot and it becomes you know you're too lazy to shift so <laughs> anyway this is the sort of ad administrator side of my website um so i can go in here's all my articles um and i could go go in and edit a particular article um they're all pretty short and um modify various attributes about about them so so this is um, Joomla. It's a, a very powerful blogging engine. It has, I've been using Joomla since the beginning. So since about 2006 with Joomla 1 and have upgraded, I think this is Joomla 4, uh, a number of times. And migrated the site a couple of times. Um, but uh, if you're probably starting out, I'd, I'd probably recommend going with uh, WordPress. That seems to be the, the uh, uh, most common choice and there are a large number of plugins for instance um, you know plugins if I go back to the home page like this uh, slider so that's a, a, a plugin um, if we go um, comp 
components, smart slider 3. So we can see I've got various things in here. Uh, I'm just using the free free version of it because I don't really need much uh, of the uh, 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 huge amount of flexibility that it has. Anyhow, so that is my sort of website yeah, built, built on Joomla. If I start again, I would probably go with WordPress because it's a bit more flexible. Or I might, at some stage, not create content in here, but instead create it on YouTube itself. So yeah, that's probably what, uh, and just just feed in the, the the content, the descriptions and stuff uh, into the into the website. So um, that's probably what I do. Another great way of sharing your knowledge is participating on a question and answer site such as Stack Overflow, which has pretty much come to completely dominate the space and killed many smaller communities and forums. But that just speaks to its utility. Uh, Delphi Praxis is another site and there may be others in whatever language you speak. If there's not one, you could create one. This is Stack Overflow. Uh, for which I'm sure you are familiar with. If you're not, uh, under what rock have you been hiding under this last decade? Um, it's basically if you Google a question, um, how do I hide a tab in a page? Delphi. Uh, we are bound to get, there we go, um, questions on Stack Overflow. Um, they are pretty much, um, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much the question and answer site on the internet. And you can, um, I watch a number of tags, for instance, Delphi, and there are lots of, lots of question and answers. Um, I find it very hard to find a question I can answer. Usually all the easy ones are answered almost instantly, such as the, the speed of response to questions. Uh, I do occasionally ask a question, um, but probably only like one a month or something like that. Um, usually a, a reasonable amount of Googling will turn up uh, <laughs> anything I want or uh, reading through the Delphi source code. Um, but here's my profile. I have a rep reputation score of, you know, six and a half thousand thereabouts. Um, and I have a, a few questions and answers, not, not a huge number. So um, sort them by score. Uh, so there's a, a, a question with um, lots of answers and views and stuff on it. But anyway, and yeah, you can earn various badges and things like that. So um, yeah, and if we have a look at some of these uh, questions, find one that's been answered. So uh, freeing runtime created components with Delphi uh, and we get an answer by say <laughs> Remy LaBelle um, yeah he has a reputation of half a million uh, I think it must be his full-time job answering questions <laughs> on Stack Overflow um, because uh, yeah that's the, him, him and uh, David Heffernan have uh, a, yeah uh, very high reputations and um, very uh, it's uh, hard to believe that um, one could get a. So, like, what, what, what percentage is he in? He's only answered six questions, but answered sixteen thousand. So, um, yeah. Anyhow, I think he's just become an MVP as well. So let's stack overflow. But there are other sites as well. Uh, here we've got uh, Delphi Praxis, which is both in English and German. And no, I don't want to translate it. So I haven't haven't used. I th occasionally, I think I see um, uh, search results uh, referencing the site. But um, yeah, absolutely, uh, it, an easy way of participating and sharing your knowledge is answering a question on Stack Overflow, or asking one, or adding a comment. It just might be a you know a, a, a link to another page or something like that that is relevant. But it's also, I found Stack Overflow has become a very unfriendly place. So it's uh, very easy to get on the wrong side of the law, so to speak, uh, <laughs> and break the rules. Uh, and people uh, are quite um, very 
eager to punish you for any <laughs> transgressions so but I still it's still the best q a site and definitely uh, do try and participate in answering questions If you have aspirations to become a movie star, then creating content for YouTube might be the path for you. You can get started with just the integrated camera and microphone on your laptop, but if you are creating a lot of content, you might need something much nicer. I use an Elgato face cam, which is just a fancy webcam for recording my face, a Blue Yeti microphone for my voice. To record the screen, I use Camtasia, which is a commercial product, but one of the best screen recording and editing tools for Windows. I also use NVIDIA Broadcast, which is free if you have an RTX capable graphics card. But if you're wanting uh, a free option for uh, recording, then Open Broadcast Studio might be an option. Uh, and it's also used for streaming. So here we have the uh, product page for Camtasia. Uh, it's a uh, product by TechSmith. As I said, this is uh, the software I use for recording the screen and um, and you know, my face. It does that all simultaneously and then you can edit it together. Um, alternatively, you can use OBS, which is the uh, Open Broadcast Studio. It's ex also extremely powerful. It's a little bit, uh, a bit of a challenge to get set up, but um, once it's, it's going, it's going. And I've used that to broadcast directly uh, to YouTube um, live. So when I was rehearsing for my ADAG presentation, my last one, I did all my rehearsals and broadcast them live on YouTube, um, which are currently, they're all uh, not available. I think I, think I might have one up anyway. But that, that's OBS, so you can use that, it's free. Uh, here is my YouTube channel, and you can see I have um, quite a lot of uh, Delphi videos um, and there's a few interviews and things like that on there and I've also started branching out on sort of general topics mostly sort of hardware type things so there's me upgrading my the memory in my laptop and yeah various other things the um, AI detection and stuff so to uh, upload content to YouTube you don't use YouTube directly but uh, use YouTube studio obviously I've logged in and you can see in the last 28 days uh, I have an estimated revenue of um, $4.66 so uh, you too can be envious of people on minimum wage by becoming a content creator on YouTube um, so yeah I don't, I don't make a lot of money on from YouTube directly um, the people who do make lots of money on YouTube they generally have sponsors and things like that who sponsor the video and you know that for the that might be like Squarespace or a variety of other other <laughs> things that, that want exposure and um, we can have a quick look at the analytics and see over the last uh, 28 days I've had 12,000 views and um, yeah some new subscribers and what kind of stuff here's a great great graph of the last 48 hours or we can go into a particular video um, for instance come down to something that's been on for a while there we go don't make this common GUI mistake so a very clickbaity title on that one and we can go into the analytics and we can see that you know initially uh, you get lots and lots of views but over time the number of new view new views drops off and we can see I've only had one view in the last 48 hours for this video but you know up to 1300 views for that video so it's not too bad and obviously there's lots and lots of interesting stuff you can use in here for you know uh, modifying your videos and promoting them and all that kind of stuff okay I'm a big fan of audiobooks and podcasts and find them a fantastic learning tool. However, I'm not aware of any Delphi podcasts that are currently getting new content. Jim McKeith used to do the podcast at Delphi.org, uh, which you can find on Spotify. Uh, obviously, there is a uh, need for a new podcast, so if you feel like creating one, then please go ahead. Speaking at a conference is a great way of sharing your knowledge. It's also probably the scariest, particularly if it's live. I've done a few live presentations that were pretty much 
or coding, all of which went great but required lots of practice up front. This presentation is obviously pre-recorded, which is much easier but still challenging. If you're watching live, you can probably ask questions in the chat window. These the presenter can answer when the recording has finished during the Q&A session. If there are no questions, um, I'm just left uh, chatting with the host. So please ask plenty of questions. Is there a Delphi user group in your area? They're not as popular post pandemic, but there are still a few around. If you can join one, then you should. These can be a great way of building up experience by presenting to just a few people, depending on the size of the group, of course. Also, it's worth hanging around at the end to chat to members. Given that I've independently published a couple of Delphi books, here are some thoughts. Publishing a book is a great way of sharing your learning, and for me it's been the most profitable. Not as profitable as actually writing code, but there is some money to be made. Getting a book published is a very complicated endeavor, but it's not as hard as it used to be. If you go through a publisher, they will probably want you to write the book in a way they can publish it in many formats, which usually involves some sort of markdown. If you publish it yourself, you can choose whatever platform you want to write your book. I wrote mine in Google Docs, but if you want to produce something like the Head First series, then publisher might be a better bet. AI is changing the way books are written. I made extensive use of Grammarly and Pro Writing Aid, both for uh, doing detailed grammar checking and rewriting of sentences. I generated a number of images using DALI, but I was a bit early to take advantage of ChatGPT. Midjourney is another image generation platform that could be used. You will also want to get your book proofread, and community members and MVPs can be very much help with this. There was probably a dozen people who proofread my first book, and about eight for the second. Finally, you will want to publish your book. I used Amazon for the printed edition and LeanPub for the digital version. Pact have published a, quite a few Delphi books, and they could be a good option as well. Here we can see my book, Code Better in Delphi. It's more or less completely written in Google Docs. If we scroll down, um, this image here, I used DALI to generate that. Uh, it's for the um, dedication, and we can scroll down and see some other, other images as well. Um, here we go. There's the Enterprise merry-go-round. And I kind of, I kind of decided I'd do um, watercolors, because I thought they would print well in black and white, which is the, uh, it's kind of the, although that, that one's not a watercolor, but that's another DALI image. And there's the, um, the text, the prompt. So an ancient warrior sitting rewriting source code on a laptop drinking coffee. So, um, so yeah, and we can see I've got all this, this um, for, so, source code formatted and things like that. So, so you can pretty much write an entire book in Google Docs. So it's 230 pages odd. Uh, we can turn Grammarly on because it thinks the book is, well, this document is rather long. And it will suggest lots of things. Um, for instance, uh, things bigger, more significant might be a better, a better word. Um, developers and size and the size. I mean, that either either I think works in that case. Uh, I think must is a better word, and so on. There's uh, offers lots of suggestions, and um, sometimes might want you to rewrite paragraphs and, and sentences and things like that for for uh, clarity. Uh, so I have a block of code, but it wants to use a um, code block instead, which I don't think makes quite as much sense. It is Grammarly is designed for non-programming text for the for the most part. And there's another Dali image image of um, uh, I think it's an ancient Greek fashion show or something like that about uh, being stylish anyway. And there's yeah, lots of the source code. Let's find a, a reasonable size block. There we go. So it has lots of problems with with that. Now to generate formatted code, if I I'll create a new document, and we'll come down and we'll grab some Delphi code. This will do, for instance. And paste that in. And what I'm going to do is first off uh, in tools, I've added. Um, extensions rather, 
code blocks. So you can install plugins and code blocks is one that I've used. So we'll start that. And from here, I can just highlight the text I want. And the language is Delphi, uh, sort of a Visual Studio theme. No background and go format. And it will think for a bit and then format that. And of course, you know, it's we probably have to adjust things a little bit uh, because of the, the long lines and things like that. But that's how I've formatted all my source code. I wanted all of these reserved words in bold. I, for some reason, it's just, just the way I like of the way I like the code to look. And for that, I used this advanced find and replace, which you can search for a, a format such as this blue text, and then replace it with well, add bold to it, for instance. So it's uh, quite cool, and if, yeah, and very very powerful and I think if, I think I've paid for it twice now uh, <laughs> it probably still thinks it's unregistered um, let's go find and replace okay and that will replace code blocks with find and replace hopefully we'll close that I'll try that again there we go and so you can search for so we can with a particular formatting so that the text color is it's going to pick it up no it's not going to let me I don't think but we could you know choose the appropriate blue or whatever but anyway uh, I used that a bit as well and the images so I used DALI so we might want a weird um, to Two elephants uh, writing code in a tree. I have no idea what this is going to come up with, but we will uh, find out. Okay, so it's writing not source code, but um, writing code maybe on a laptop. Now, uh, Dali costs money to use, as does Midjourney. The generating these images is a rather computationally intensive task. So there we go, elephants using a, a laptop. Um, and if I click on, I can see I've got 109 prompts left. And if we scroll, scroll through, you can see I've tried uh, lots and lots of different things. To, computer programmers playing on a merry-go-round it's like yeah and uh, stuff for dependency injection some toolboxes so a watercolor of a toolbox full of tools in a workshop so DALI is very powerful and you can generate some quite cool images uh, previously you would have had to employ someone or draw them do the drawings yourself for sort of customized images but now it's basically free or you know, a few dollars for uh, being able to generate dozens, if not hundreds, of these images. So once you have your book written, you're going to want to get it proofread. So this is where Google Docs is absolutely brilliant, because I can just share this document, uh, share it with another version of myself, and make them a commenter, and then they can type changes, but um, they're kind of uh, they don't actually affect the text and you can then approve or ignore those changes and they can also make comments in the margin so it's absolutely brilliant uh, it's the best way to get a book proofread because you can have multiple multiple people proofreading it at the same time while you're busy going through and approving or ignoring all their all the changes that are, that are happening so it can all happen very very fast and uh, can work quite well so once all of that your book is edited, you've, you're, you're done, uh, you pr produce a PDF of it. You're going to need a cover. Now, I had my cover designed by using 99designs. So we can see I've had as my original logo was designed and we had another logo for another enterprise that, that my wife and I do. And if we have a look at uh, the uh, deleted by 99designs, so <laughs> But we can see these are the, the various iterations of, of the book 
uh, provided by various designers. So, um, yeah, man, most of these were really good. I would have been happy with with quite a few of them, but I went with uh, the the final design, um, which is actually not this one, but this is uh, um, in Photoshop. This is my code better in Delphi type um, title. I basically just changed the background image and the, obviously the back the back text and made it uh, better rather than faster and changed the color. So the second book was uh, much easier and cheaper to do the title for. But I did need to uh, subscribe to <laughs> a, a, a Adobe, pay the Adobe tax uh, for the privilege of being able to edit the cover. So. Um, yeah, so I use 99 Designs. Fiverr is another platform for, for such things. Probably could end up being a lot cheaper. Once you've got your cover and, and book and all that kind of stuff, and you're ready to publish, um, you can publish uh, the, the two platforms that I used was is um, Kindle Direct and LeanPub. Le I said before, LeanPub for the electronic version. And if we have a look at books, we can see that I am currently number four. And they have... Um, quite a variety of books published uh, on this platform and we can go in and look at my author section books and uh, code faster and have a look at this I don't know the about so provide lots of information about the book what I've used to publish the electronic versions and they take a 20% cut so I get to keep 80% of the royalties Whereas if I published a Kindle edition, uh, Amazon would keep 70% and I would get 35% of the royalties, unless my book was under $10, in which case I could keep 70%. Uh, and my book is not a $10 book. So Kindle Direct, um, this is, I've, so you can use it to create a Kindle edition, but I used it just for the print only version. And uh, basically you upload a PDF and a cover page, and there's a, it's got some uh, tools that allow, yeah, allow you to check out looks and where the margins are and all that kind of stuff. We can also look at some of the reporting and you can have a look at the vast amount of money I'm making, making from uh, <laughs> publishing on Amazon. It's actually quite a bit at the moment because the book's just been published. So we can see that I've, this, this in the last 30 days, I've sold uh, 16 copies of <laughs> of Code Better and Delphi and four, so it's 20, 20 copies in total. Um, and we can see that actually Germany is my biggest uh, <laughs> biggest market, which is interesting. Um, and yeah, so this there is there is money to be made. Uh, I the so the if I go lean pub. Code Faster in Delphi. This is where uh, you can purchase the book, and but you can also adjust how much you pay. So you can pay as little as twenty-five. I think at Code Better, I've got it. You can pay as little as twenty dollars, or you can pay more if you want. And actually, surprisingly, a few people have. So I'm not quite sure <laughs> what their what their logic is there, but um, I'm very grateful for it. And yeah, so so it's, you know, I sold thirteen copies in in that amount of time and effectively if we have a look at uh, this page here we can see that in ball and delphi programming i am a number one bestseller uh, <laughs> so in a month if you can sell um 20 books 20 delphi books uh, you, you, you too can be a number one bestseller so occupying the number one and number three slot there um and that's ball and delphi we can go to delphi it's a Delphi programming computer. I, I don't get the, the title, but um, there I am, number one there as well. And somewhere down here, did I go past it? No, I don't even feature in the the top top forty in that category. Maybe I'm not in that category for um, code code faster in Delphi. That's a possibility. But yeah, as you can see, I you know I'm not making a ridiculous amount of money from selling books but um the the income i mean i can uh, let's let's put all my cards on the table let's go orders and we can say lifetime so we can see i've got a spike when i sold or released uh code 
faster in Delphi back in 2020 and I've got another spike uh, in for um, I sold 45 copies in that, that month but more typically I'm selling you know four five six one copy there and zero zero in April so um, mostly not not selling a huge number of books but um, you know 45 books is is a reasonable number and there's a uh, it's a reasonable amount of money but uh, in no way does it reasonably compensate me for the amount of time I put into the book that is getting your book published um, it's there's a lot of steps involved and you've got to write you know all sorts of marketing bits and pieces uh, for it which I find uh, pretty difficult um, yeah so that's that's kind of kind of that the last thing I want to mention is uh, chat GPT so uh, let's load up uh, the chat on Bing and say write me an article about uh, oh cats no um, the dependency conversion principle using examples in Delphi and I should probably say please because who knows when uh, ChatGPT is going to become our robot overlords so uh, it's always, always pays to be polite and it's thinking so it's uh it's thanking me for the request and there we go it's one of the five solid principles and what have you let's see an example okay So it's writing some uh, some Delphi code for us. Okay, and the find work, uh, works it works fine, but has problems. Um, okay, violates the open close principle. Okay, well we're wanting dependency inversion, but that's all right. Uh, okay, so a better approach is to apply the dependency inversion principle, and here we go. So we're creating an interface this time. To an iData reader and an iData printer, and I guess these would be different different units if we were actually implementing this. But um, yes, so this is uh, rather scary because it's uh, actually writing quite reasonable uh, text and code, and I could probably very quickly throw together a book about the solar principles in Delphi uh, using this if I so chose. Um, I probably have to rewrite everything because it's not not the way I speak or write, but that's okay. Um, okay, so yeah, AI is is changing everything. There's there's a uh, very nice blog post. I probably want to double check everything, but um, that's probably uh, okay. And yeah, not nonsense, which is what uh, AI used to generate when you asked it questions like like this. But now it's um, very, very reasonable. So, yeah, I don't know what this is going to mean. Uh, it probably means that um, you're not going to know if a human wrote stuff or AI. But um, and then it's going to get the interesting effect that the AI is going to be learning stuff that it's already spat out. So uh, this is where sort of hallucinations start to become uh, a bit more vivid. So anyway, yeah, ChatGPT, it's interesting I'm not sure what it's going to do in the future it's just because it's just going to get better and better and better and maybe we will not be going to Stack Overflow anymore we will be asking directly uh, chat GPT and I've, I've asked it questions and got it to generate me some sample code for doing certain things and uh, quite often uh, it, it is perfectly reasonable code that compiles so this is Camtasia and this is the um, uh, how to share your knowledge uh, presentation that I'm currently working on and we can see on the timeline um, it's about 44 minutes currently it'll be a, bit, be a bit shorter of from what I've got so far because there'll be quite a bit editing and trimming and, and that kind of thing that goes on it's gonna take me quite a few hours to edit it 
but we can see let's grab this and make that kind of about that size and then I can go into my favorites and say background removal and that's removed the background for that section although it's it's clearly not perfect um, I have previously used the background removal in NVIDIA broadcast but uh, Camtasia doesn't support transparent video and or transparent webcam webcams with with, with transparency it's a 32-bit video as opposed to sort of you know 24-bit and that means I replaced it with a green replace the background with a green just basically a green pix pixel um, and so and then I could remove the background using um, this uh, remove background color so uh, green screen but this works a lot better because it's a bit anti-aliased in and there's no green fringing involved um, but we can see that it has had a little bit of difficulty with some of the edges I probably need to um, uh, push down my hair it's probably sticking out a little bit and that's probably what's causing the problem so uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this talk I hope you found it um, useful and I hope you will start sharing your knowledge in various ways um, and yeah I hope to see you present at a uh, future Embarcadero conference so I'm Alistair Christie thank you for watching my presentation and we'll uh, move on to the question and answers brilliant absolutely brilliant uh, really good session there from Alistair Christie um, I've been putting little uh, bottom thirds across and things like that but the good news is Alistair's with us live right now and he's up at two or three in the morning isn't it Alistair I think, I think Mark yes is going to make there you go oh, yeah. Hello. Um, yeah. Woo! see we're now side by side yeah so three o'clock in the morning is it your time yeah thereabouts well, did, yeah. oh, two, oh. Two, two, two. <laughs> yeah so I apologize can't, great thing about can't be too loud because my, my wife and child are sleeping in the next, next room I'm oh. currently in Cairns oh, uh, Australia traveling you're talking so, to the wrong guy then because I'm always loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to stay up. I mean, I, uh, you know, I operate entirely on coffee. Otherwise, I would be asleep 24-7. Um, really, <laughs> really, you know, a yeah. really great session. We had a, a whole bunch of questions. Um, and let me just, uh, whilst we're doing that as well, let me just, uh, hang on. Uh, I'm just going to make this thing scroll across the bottom there as well so that you uh, oh, okay. get your yes, you. heads up. Um, yeah, a little, bit, a little bit of free advertising. Much appreciated. Uh, well, yes. You know, I want to see that spike go up on, on uh, yeah. uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, what was it, Lean Pump, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I was looking at the Amazon Amazon graphs. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I do, I've done audio books in the past, and it's exactly the same thing because it's even worse when you do an audio book because it's somebody else's words that you're reading. Uh, and so you're kind of at the mercy of the author's publicity and things like that. I just uh, spoke to them and off they went. But uh, so, sometimes I, I did one for um, Chelsea Soccer Club in the UK and uh, and I thought it might be okay. And then one day, apparently they put it up on some big screen at the Chelsea Soccer Ground with 38,000 people watching and I just had a message <laughs> Uh, avalanche of uh, sounds. I couldn't. I didn't know why. I guess you know, it just happened. But uh, yes, the vagaries of uh, of commission based uh, earnings are always good. Mm. Um, a lot of questions. Um, some of them uh, were from earlier, but um, I'm just going to pick a few up here. Um, let me just uh, pick this one. Um, I've seen so many videos by Alistair Christie that are, I'm actually going to go and buy a book from him. Um, as thanks, if the shipping oh, isn't thank you, thank you very much. I, did, I didn't actually work out where he lived, um, so for all I know, it, it may be uh, insanely high. But yeah, well, the, the um, uh, Amazon, the print on demand, is done in several countries, so it's printed, you know, at least near you. Uh, and for me, yeah, it's they, the, the, the print them in Australia for for shipping uh, <laughs> is interesting. I, I um, you know, ordered my copies straight away, but I see saw people on Facebook and stuff posting copies of their books before my, my mine arrived. So yeah, yeah it's crazy stuff. And, and copy. Yeah, I mean, I got sent a copy uh, early, you know, because of what I do, um, and you know, it was great uh, reading through it. I, I've personally, as a developer, long before I was an MVP, always watched your videos. I have to say, and uh, you know, I regularly uh, watch them, and I have learned things. You know, I've been. 
um, a coder for 38 years and a Delphi person since the very first day Delphi came out. And I still learn things. So if anybody... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, that, 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 that's one. all the time. That's great. It's a yeah, great I think, I think industry most people, to be in. Well, I think most people would describe me as a, an advanced Delphi developer. And yet, if I can learn <laughs> things there from your books, then there... Is it advanced? Is it the right. gray here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yes, advanced <laughs> age. Yes, yeah. I think a lot of us are like that now. So, um, yeah, so yeah. Sort of that... getting more and more grey and uh, in, in the beard. <laughs> you have more. I, I I have less hair than you. That's what it is. Yeah, I started to get, um, get, a, get a bit thin on the in the in the front. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and also coding makes you go that way as well. So, um, so uh, yeah, and someone else said uh, I enjoy your videos. Um, thanks very much, which was great. Um, and lots of people saying, oh, I love Delphi, and hello from various uh, countries around the world, an Italian streamer who says he does live coding. Uh, this is Compilia yep. Quindiva, uh, whatever that is. I'm, I don't speak a lot of Italian apart from food-related and alcohol-related uh, Italian, uh, which is the best way, I find, because Italy does really great food. But um, Alistair does a lot of streaming. And uh, you should really go to his YouTube channel and click on like and subscribe. And in fact, um, I should, I, I suppose if they go to you, learn Delphi uh, TV, they can uh, go they to click on any video. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, you know, for people that are streaming, it really does help if you like and subscribe um, because it, it bumps up that algorithm and the Google uh, AI and, goes, oh. Okay. And leave a comment. So, I mean, it's an easy, easy way and of participating comment. in the community, right? Just, just, just write a comment on the video. Yeah. No. Preferably a nice one and not about cakes or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah. feedback's important. And also, yeah. I get quite a few, um, you know, comments in different languages, which is interesting. You have to go to Google Translate to make sure. Yeah, not I mean, or something like that. I thought it was interesting that you showed the chat, chat GPT. I mean, do you do you find you're using that a lot more now, or uh, just just from time to time? Um, but it's it is it is scary that you can ask it questions and it can you know give you actual delphi code that you can then copy and paste and use and um, yeah yeah and sometimes and it, you can then say uh you know make comments and say that you know that, that you wanted it in a different way or something like that or that it's something some part of it is incorrect and it will correct it yeah um, and I, I know eli um who is going to be doing a session not today actually uh, probably tomorrow um, Eli worked for several months on some AI projects, and so he's like our in-house guru uh, when it comes to AI. Well, I suppose we should have an AI that's an in-house guru of AI. But... Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, they'll probably take us over the world, take over the world. But um, yeah, I mean, he swears by it, and he, he, he you know, uh, one of the things, the background that you can't really see um, behind me, actually, and uh, behind both of us on on the live stream. Uh, all of these backgrounds were originally generated by AI. Um, we haven't really mentioned that, but um, I'm not sure whether they use Mid Journey or something like that. But probably Mid Journey. I think I think that's what most people use. Um, that seems to be the you know Picasso so, of the moment. Yeah, and it's yeah. a you can get a, a certain amount of free, free you know free prompts that you can use, and then you have to subscribe right. to a monthly thing. Which yeah, which I, I quite prefer, I preferred the um, uh, Dali thing, which is you know you you buy. You know, you spend, mm. I don't know, it's about thirty dollars and get a hundred prompts or one hundred and fifty prompts or something like that. Um, yeah, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we we uh, my daughter is just about to finish her degree in graphic design, which is quite funny because yeah. uh, she she was at uh, uh, university for five years, uh, and I call her education my Tesla, which will give you some some idea of how expensive that education yeah. was. But, you know, we're, we're lucky. We're very, uh, you know, I feel very privileged that, you know, we can play for her education. But um, the weird thing was she did start out learning Korean and then swapped to graphic design. So um, for three and a half, four years, she's been doing nothing but graphic design. And she is obviously now she's reaching graduation. She said, OK, well, I, I'm, I'm going to go and uh, look for some jobs. And she went for a job interview and they uh, gave her the job based on her portfolio. And the first day she uh, started work, she texted us almost in tears. Uh, and we're like, what's up, what's up? You know, you have a bad day at work. She said, I started work and they um, said to me, you should be using AI to leverage your um, creativity every day at work. 
but she was horrified because she'd just gone mm -hmm. through and done that degree to learn the techniques of, of you know, graphic design and the rest of it. And there they were saying, use AI and then just buff up what you get from the AI. So it's interesting. I, like a few years ago, you know, that if you said what jobs were going to be replaced by AI, AI, I would have said, you know, you know, text driver, truck, truck driver, all the, all the, um, uh, yeah, yeah. driver related stuff because of all the, data. Yeah. Mundane. Um, but it, I suppose the first first kind of series of jobs is like trans, translation in terms of you know translating between different languages. Yeah, that's, that's I, I hadn't, hadn't even thought about people being made unemployed because of 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 that aspect. Um, but yeah, I suppose all this create creative stuff is seems to be the the easy easy AI stuff of uh, images and um, text and. Uh, well, I think it's, the, it's the thing that I. Strange. I think a few of us, you know, have talked about it and said, oh, the code that's generated there, um, you know, the code is not correct or it's correct, but it's not great. And and I, as we were chatting in the, the little chat beforehand, I said, I wonder where they get the code examples from because that code mm -hmm. example with the dependency inversion that you had in there, uh, which, by the way, I was, there's a very good video on dependency inversion as well. I think it was some color shapes or something. I forget what it was. But, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See, I, I remember correctly. It's, uh, it's um, it's kind of a kind of a, a a cheats way of doing dependency inversion without you know you can use anonymous methods rather than interfaces. Um, yeah. Make... But what was what was interesting about the example that it gave was that it, it, it you know it was a, a credible example of dependency in, inversion in the little chat that came up. And what's weird there is that um, I doubt that that is regurgitating exact code from someone else. It's not it's gone not, copy yeah, exactly. and paste. It is not an AI version of Stack Overflow, copy and paste from Stack Overflow, which is the old joke, you know, it, it, what yeah. does, what, what's the difference between a junior developer and a senior developer? The senior developer is better at Google searches and copying from mm -hmm. Stack Overflow, and it's true. Uh, you know, you know where to look, and that's the difference. But um, the AI is not that. So I, I, I wonder where he got it from. I know they they scan GitHub and a few other things for public projects. And you know, if you got that well, art, it, it's, it's, it's the entire web, right? Basically, that that um, so, yeah. so the thing is, you know, the basically they've, they've used the I, I don't know how much of the web, but uh, a fair chunk mm. of it to, to generate the language models. Um, and there'll be a fair fair amount of Delphi code in that. So well, some, somebody said to me, and... yeah, I, I, I saw, and I've seen this comment a few times, oh, they should credit where they got the te the code from. But the trouble is that that's assuming that it's like copy and paste. But it's not. It would be like you and I having to explain all the people we've ever met in their entire oh, I, I, career. I, 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 learned, I learned this from that book and this from this other bit from yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know how to uh, lay out Fire Monkey because, you know, I went to 17 webinars and here's all the names of the people, you know, and then amalgamated that knowledge. And that's the thing that um, chat GPT and AI is, it's not, it's not, I mean, sometimes it, you can see that it's obviously copied from somewhere uh, because it's too good. You know, there's a comment very famously where it had a copyright message in the comment because they'd messed up with uh, chat GPT three, but yeah. it is not, it's not. Oh, and, and, and in images as well, they had the, you know, the little, um, uh, the Gitty images or something like that logo that was kind of yeah kind of yeah that's the, a problem. <laughs> I think it's just Ooh, because you know, that, that logo is in a lot of images and it would have learned from a lot yeah so it kind of thought um, sounds like a lawsuit of, in the making I imagine yeah so, <laughs> I think it was yeah yeah and uh, I mean it's going to happen but uh, I'm quite excited I mean I, the, the AI is becoming actually something that I always thought it would be you know much more like the computer you saw on Star Trek. Or on you know Babylon Five or something like that, where they would say, uh, "Oh, there's an incoming message from some planet." And in fact, my little demo later says exactly that. Uh, and uh, you'd say, "Well, what is it?" Because you don't know, and you know, they can't Google search for that. But the AI actually works it out and says, "Oh, it's you know, it sounds most similar to a language from you know Indonesia seventeen thousand years ago or something like that," and then then tries to work out how to decode it by actually using some inference from the way the vowel sounds work or the lack of vowel sounds or whatever. So, you know, um, I, I'm excited, but it is a little bit scary that, yeah, you can see there are some jobs that are actually going to 
um, probably go by the wayside um, it, through AI. I think it's because, more than some. It's 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 going to be most jobs. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, I mean, I think anyway. our jobs will change. You know, I think. Yeah. That's, I'm pretty old yeah, I think, now. I think so, programming uh, is still <laughs> still a good, good good job to have. Uh, I think I, yeah. I kind of feel it'll be one of the the last jobs that um, AI will replace because there'll be until until AI starts writing itself. Um, uh, we, uh, that so won't be long, I don't think. <laughs> I think, yeah. you know, I think it's uh, it's interesting stuff. So, um, I mean, just to be clear, you're not, you, your, your stuff is not just about AI. That just happened to be one of the things I picked up on. But, um, you know, learn uh, Delphi.tv and also learn Delphi.org, which, you know, similar sounding names, but no connection between the two. There are hundreds of your videos on there. People kept saying in the chat, and it was kind of we live and learn from, from these things. A lot of people saying, oh, I want to see someone writing code, and I want to see coding examples. And actually, I think it's safe to say you've got a lot of videos like that. Am I right? <laughs> there's, there's quite a few. I mean, there's about 200 and something videos on, on Delphi, Delphi programming. Um, and I mean, some of the early ones I, I cringe at, but uh, <laughs> still, I've still, still got them up there. Um, Don't look back at anything older than about a week. That's my advice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I look but back. Still, to I mean, that. that's yeah. one of the great things about Delphi as well is that, um, it, in in many ways, the the language itself hasn't changed a huge amount. I mean, we've got lots of lots of new stuff, but uh, you know, you can read a Delphi three book, and it's still there's still lots of relevant content in there. Whereas yeah. if you you know read a real Visual Basic book from say 15 years ago um you were probably completely useless uh oh my so. favorite is c plus plus you know it's a very powerful language c plus plus but uh the the basic uh, trouble with c plus plus is that every couple of years there's a new standard and a whole bunch of things that you used to rely on no longer work and there's a new way of doing it and that new way of doing it actually melts my brain because uh you know um I think that C++ is uh, is actually made for people who are way smarter than me. That's probably the only thing I can say about it. It's a great language, but I'm it, not clever enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I learned C++ at university, and I haven't really used it very much since. Um, yeah. And, yeah. Well, I, I actually I edit C++. I edit C++ yeah. articles all the time, and I, I can write in C++. I'm used to coding C++, but uh, I prefer Delphi. It's a lot easier, yeah. If, if Bjorn's through stop comes on, I'm going to be nice to him and say, oh, I love C++. It's my favorite language, but <laughs> Delphi. Delphi's the one it's, for it's, me. So. It's a powerful language. Yeah, yeah. C++ is very yeah. powerful. Um, yeah, but that it, is it gives the you, of, Yeah, it gives you a lot of rope I mean, to hang yourself with as the other... <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's the it. thing about Delphi is it, it kind of protects you and actually is very, very easy to learn because it's based on Pascal, which was a language that was effectively invented as a teaching language and uh, turned out to be a lot more useful than than just uh, an aid to teaching logic and, and coding. It actually turned out to be, um, you know, perfect for all sorts of scenarios and particularly with Rad Studio. It's, uh, as you'll see in our I videos. Find it, you can do all... I find it interesting that, um, you know, you, you look at Delphi or Pascal, and you kind of think of it as quite, it's quite a verbose language. But then you uh, do some a bit of Java coding or something like that, and <laughs> well, you know, the, the syntax is a lot more concise. But you end up writing vast amount of object creation and and stuff. Code. Yeah, uh, yeah and the, that's React fun. and all the rest of it. They're like, oh, yeah. it's declarative. And you're like, no, come on, this is this is a crazy way of doing things. So. <laughs> It's good. Well, um, we've run out of time, um, okay. as always happens. But, um, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for staying up until ridiculous o'clock. Yeah, no, I, I went to sleep, actually. I've, I'll go back to bed, um, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, no, I, sort of still a bit on New Zealand time. So, um, yeah, going going to bed early, getting up early at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it's, it's you're the opposite end of the planet to us. So yeah. it's, it's very strange. It's only, uh, uh, yeah, it's only a two-hour difference, but it makes quite still makes quite a difference in the. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, when I fly to the UK, it always confuses everybody. I, I don't get jet lag, but I do. I do still think, well, surely it's four o'clock and it's uh, eight o'clock in the morning or something. So, but, yeah. okay. Well, thanks once again. So, um, all right, I'll, I'll sign off by saying, you know, start a blog, write an article, write a book, uh, record a video, write a tweet, yeah, whatever. 
um, do do participate in the Delphi community. It's the, how how we make things better and get more Delphi users. Just by having more, right. more spread it around. That's so, exactly like, exactly spread what the love. We're doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Well, thanks a lot, and I appreciate. It. And you know, uh, people need to like and subscribe, and go to your website and buy your book. They're great books. They're definitely worth um, spending a few few dollars or pounds or euros or whatever you can't see as it's uh, and and other know. Delphi books. I mean, it's not just mine now. There's you know, there's quite a few. Dali's Dali has published a few, and um, uh, Primoz has got his new book out. Um, oh yeah, uh, and Holger, uh, he's got he's got like three yeah, he's books. Got quite he gets bored easy so, and just writes another book. I'm sure that's what it does. He's so, very good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, do 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 buy books and do a lot of reading. Um that's it's yeah. Anyway, I better I better go. All right. Uh, well yeah, thanks, thanks very much. Video be cute. Yes, uh, we're off to go and do See something else. Thanks a lot, Alistair. Speak to you soon. Okay, cheers. cheers.